what's up, what's up, Jesse three JP in the house, gotta continue. Anyway, he was in the reading class and um in there with these uh four and five I mean five and six year old students and he was, his reading was so well. He was just blowing them out the out the water, you know. And uh most of my students if they do they don't have to do homework and if they participate in speaking class, um some of they had these I mean, English tests out here. And I've had my students like seven, eight years old take the test to get, you know, over 40. Out of 50, they'll get over 40. One girl, she took the four, I mean the five, and then she took, uh, what was it? Was it the one? One, two. I forgot. Yeah, the five, and then she took the four, and she blew that out the water. She got like a 46 out of 50, you know, and, um, it's just really interesting. Then I got some students who just don't, who kind of talk during class, you know, and mess around and stuff, and they take the test, and one girl failed, and because I don't know if she likes me or not, you know, and I was really sad. Her mom told me, and I was like, well, you know, uh, your daughter just talks the whole time during class and don't pay attention if she don't do her homework. You know, she does, she'll do the homework and do everything backwards. And I'm like, why you keep doing it backwards? You know, this, uh, you know, don't think a big deal until she took the test and it failed. You know, and I just told her mother, you know, it's, you know, if you look at your daughter's notes, you know, everything's there, you know. And then I had this other student, she's kind of like that too. She talk and try to be boss in the class, you know, these eight, nine year old, 10 year old kids and stuff, you know, and I'm not going to yell at them. You know, and she took the test. Um, I think it was the four Q test. I would think it was or the three. I'm not sure. And she just barely passed it. You know, and her mother said she passed it, but her score was slow. And I just said, you know, I keep telling your daughter, do her homework. You know, and and what's interesting about my classes is that the homework, all I say, like in the reading, I say, just give the paper to your kids and have them read just five minutes, that's all. You know, read the best they can and read out loud and that's it, you know. It's just, it's just really interesting. But, you know, my whole main thing is what I want to do is, and I know, uh, I don't know if it's stupid or not, but I think a lot of other people are doing that too. You know, you have a certain group of people out here and they got the, you know, when they, um, doing a hiring and stuff you know I'm not saying if it's the um, bias or not it might be I've heard a lot of stories I actually haven't had the opportunity to uh, have these problems and things like that and now that you know they're looking for teachers and stuff and I guess if you're here it's easier to get a job you know but um, um, what can I say that uh, there, um, some places might be selective, you know, especially these private schools and things like that. And then if you work for these other companies, sometimes it could just be mad crazy and stuff, you know, the uh, things that you got to go through. But um, what I want to do is uh, get all this training stuff done, these training manuals and stuff done, and try to open up some type of a um, online training something you know, and um, train potential um, teachers and things like that. Because my class, you have to know Japanese. You is speaking Japanese and knowing how to translate and how to do all this stuff. You have to know it, and um, if you don't, it's just it's going to be really difficult. And even my Japanese isn't good. And not that my students say they don't understand what I'm saying. You know, even though I do my best, but you know, they still catch on. You know, so. Um, and actually the best thing to do is just keep speaking all in English if you can, but sometimes they won't understand, so you should be able to know that, um, Japanese should translate it. But, um, what I'm trying to do is just get some brothers over here, you know, to, um, to work and stuff. But the only bad thing about that, and it happens to anyone, is that you get people over here, you train them, and then, um, uh, you know, they're like, well, I could do this on my own, you know, and then when they gone, and it's kind of hard to find, you know, some good help and stuff like that. And so, if anyone want to work with me, for me, whatever, whatever word is more comfortable with you, is I need like I want to do like a two-year uh, contract, and you get all training, whatever. And then you want to quit after two years, that's fine. 
you know, and um, there's a lot of other things into it, like um, the max anyone will make working for me would be, it is according to the prices, but if it's 60 bucks an hour, then it will be $5,000, and then if you want to make any other more money than that, then open up other schools, you know, find a teacher, train a teacher, or well, no, find a teacher, find an area, and and if it's a good area, then let me know. I'll open up a school, train a teacher, and and uh, the max you'll you'll get you'll get when the school makes money, you'll make money from that school too because you open it and stuff like that. And, but the max you'll get, you know, would be only two thousand dollars. And you can open up as many schools like that as you can. But then you know, after you do it, after you think about that, then you're like, well, or you can open up my own school. It's fine because once you quit, you don't get the money. Well, you don't get the five thousand is gone. I'm um, two thousand dollars. You, uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do that though. But you will get money from it, so you will always get residual money for um, that, you know. But it's um, it's just a lot of things I've just been thinking about and stuff, you know. But the whole thing, you know, about doing this, it's just, you know, you get these guys over here that's just really weak to their wives. And, you know, once their wives, you know, just nosy and these guys are just, oh, my God, it's like they just really soft. And you get someone, some, I mean, because, like, some of these wives, they'll, your husband will open up and the wives don't want to do anything. And then all of a sudden the wife's, the wives get wise to the business, and next thing you know, she's meddling in it because he, he don't have the power to stop her and everything because it's probably everything is in her name anyway, you know, and that's a no-no. You don't do that. You know, you do it in your name. And, well, you know, like, she's my wife. I love her, and I trust her. I'm like, all right, fine. You know, business is business, and, you know, whatever. And next thing you know, she got the business, and she's running it, you know, doing well, and, and you're not even working and you got to find a job and stuff because maybe she don't want you there, you know, because you're going to mess it up and fight. And it's it's a crazy stuff that goes on. So basically, you know, it's a lot of stuff I had to think about, you know. But then again, I want to make a program too where parents are able to teach their kids at home the same thing, you know, but um, make it a little faster and stuff like that. And then I want to go nationwide with this too. So it's just really interesting because if I could get my students... Um, I had these kindergarten students I teach in class of, in a class of like 25 to um, 30 students and you know by the end of the year they're all reading or they're all able to go into a reading class and if I can do this in a year with 20 to 25 students once a um, one only four times a month once a week for an hour four times a month then you know the schools you know you should be able to do that you know because I figure what I'm doing you know by the time these students can uh, be able to get out there and start spitting the English on their own, I mean, really doing it well. You know, I mean, of course, it should only take one year because if they're able to read, you know, start reading in one year and they read something there and they know how to translate it into Japanese, then all you got to do is remember those sentences and stuff like that. But mine isn't all about just memorizing sentences, it's all about them creating their own sentences and stuff like that. And my higher level classes, they're doing that now. And the whole program could take anywhere from four to five years, depending on the pace of the students, you know, whether they're playing or not, you know, because they're playing, it'll take a, um, because the um, subject and the uh, A subject, I mean, the grammar class is the longest, you know, it takes a long time. Everything else is just, um, it doesn't take so long, you know. And then the first, of course, the first year till they start reading and stuff, um, that um, takes a, about, you know, it takes a little while. Like this year, one girl, four-year-old, six-year-old sisters came in in six months, you know, they're reading like crazy. And now, you know, they haven't even been here a year and they're already in a grammar course and stuff. So, and they're doing really good. So, uh, so uh, hopefully they'll finish it within a year. <laughs> I hope they do, you know. But anyway, I just thought I'd throw this out there and let y'all know. Uh, what my plans are, because I'm thinking big, because actually I want to try to um, just really make an impact in Japan as far as this English, because I, I think I like this, if, uh, wait, hold on.